Good morning. My name is Vinay Jamba, and I'm director of Brussels Learning Centre. We are dealing in IELTS PT and student visa. Basically, today in this video, we will discuss about the Canada visa process, and I'm going to just discuss about the student visa of Canada particularly. So the first thing is that here is the process in the three different channels, same like Australia. So here the first channel for the offer letter. We will apply your offer letter with the help of some different type of the documents and the documents I am going to just enumerate to here in this video. So the document number one that we need the academic certificate totally, and the second that we call the passport, and the third one if any gap in between your profile, so there is a gap justification certificate in the form of experience or anything else, and the next is your English proficiency test report. Uh, that uh, that is uh, with the help of the different things because in Canada there are two process of uh, visa. The first that we call SPS category that we call student direct stream. On the other hand, the non SPS category. So that is divided on the behalf of some things like that. If the student have completed their files within a six band, not less than six in any module, and student has done their plus two recently. So the student will go for the SPS category. On the other hand, if the student has done their graduation and the master and want to go for the PG diploma and the master once again, so student need to go for the 6.5 overall score and not less than 6 in any module. On the other hand, if you're talking about the non SPS category, the requirement of the documents are the same, like same academic documents, passport, and here the student will go for the 5.5 in any module, and student can go with the PTE, and student will go with the IELTS journal as well. So that's the difference between the SPS and non SPS category. Next one, if we after just completing all the documents and submitting all the documents to the university and the college, the second stage will start. We have to wait for the offer letter. So the offer letter that is dependent upon the reputation of the college and the university. Basically two types of the colleges and the universities in the Canada right now. The one that we call public universities and the colleges and second that we call the non-public or the private in other sense. So if you just uh, want to get your course in your public university and college, so you have to wait for three working days to the 60 working days for your offer letter. That is dependent upon your choice of course and the reputation of the university that's such on the other hand if you just go for the private college so the private college will give you your offer letter within a day and two days as well so that's the main difference after getting the offer letter what you should do you have to go for the fee because all the university and the colleges of the canada has their minimum time for 15 days for the submission for the fee and within 15 days you have to go for your fee submission after submission your fee you have to go for the gic that we call guaranteed investment certificate here you have to pay for the 10200 rupees one thing more that you have to remember that here in the canada mostly all the colleges and universities are getting the offer letter fee that's not free such as australia and other countries so students have to go for the 50 dollar to the 350 dollar in some cases averagely that is the fee for the offer that is 100 dollar to 150 dollar in between almost all the universities and colleges on the other hand the student have to go for the gic that we call the uh, guaranteed investment certificate that is nothing students have to just pay 10,200 post uh, canadian dollar in the Canada bank and uh, that would be a Nova Scotia bank and ICIC bank no matter of that 1200 Canadian dollars so that's the process after just getting all the things after getting our open ledger and after filling our fee and the GIC along with that next process is for the uh, once again uh, we will go for the LOA for the LOA, here is some requirement of the universities and the colleges. So here is a requirement on the behalf of the SPS category and the non SPS category. So I'm going to tell all the things about the SPS category and the requirement of the documents as well. Here, students have to go for the one year tuition fee along with their GIC and SOP as well. So that's the mandatory documents here and some are the, uh, we can say, add up type of the documents. You can do that. On the other hand, known as this category, have their different categories of the documents. They are going to get all these documents, same like the STS category, like one year tuition fee, plus GIC, and plus SOP. That is compulsory here, SOP. Along with some more documents like income certificate, and the next is the wealth report of the student and their parents, 
plus last thing student have to maintain 8 lakh rupees in their account that's the minimum level for that you can go beyond it no matter what so that's the necessary document for the known sts category after just completing all the documents you just lead towards the lodgement and the lodgement for the filing all the documents i just you told you before that so the something after just getting fee and the gic and all the document the the college will provide us loa that we call letter of acceptance and after getting the loa we are go for the third level of the visa that we call lodgement and for the lodgement we needed some more documents the documents like that the loa from the side of the university and the college gic certificate that we call guaranteed investment certificate and the third that we need the medical of the student and the next we need the embassy fee that is 150 dollar in canadian form and next is the biometric fee that is 85 dollar so student will go for the biometric and their medical and after completing all the documents we will just launch the file into the mrc so here once again the little bit difference in between sts category will get their visa within 20 working days now, on the other hand non sts category student have to wait for the seven weeks minimum so if that's the difference in between of both the categories sts and the non sts and that's the total process of the canada how you can get and make your dream true that's the main thing you have to just uh, share this video with all your persons and all your peoples so here is one more rumor that i i feel that i should go talk on it as well though many people are just talking about that the non sts category is not a good category and the successful visa chances in that category so that's totally rumor in the market your visa is totally dependent upon many factors the factor number one that is dli so your your particular institutions is just in the list of dli or not the second number that's your choice of course is good or not and that is optimal or not the third one your sop fourth one your documentations the next one your sop i discussed on that i think so that's all that so basically your visa is not dependent upon the sts and the non sts category yeah we are just going to cap out all the things and we just add up more documents according to the embassy non sts category so there's no issue about the visa visa is not dependent upon sts and non sts category that is basically dependent upon the student profile student course choice the student institution and the student SOP and the sum of factors in that but the basic factors are these so I feel that you will learn a lot about the Canada in this video and if you need more and you have any type of the query you can just send us on our mobile number on Facebook and any channel on that and I feel that you have to share this video with your friends and all the people who are just seeking for the options in Canada thank you have a nice day we are Blossom Learning Center